Hello and welcome back to Jason's Macintosh Museum. This is part two in the video series on the Macintosh 2VX from 1992. And in this video we're going to start the 2VX up and show a couple of old CD-ROM based Macintosh games, given that the 2VX was in fact the first model of Macintosh to offer an optional internal CD-ROM drive. And as you can see we have a keyboard, mouse and monitor hooked up to the 2VX and for the monitor, we're using the uh, very reflective um, <laughs> Macintosh color display, which is the um, color display that uses the Sony Trinitron tube. And we have the Apple Keyboard 2 and the Apple ADV mouse. The 2VX supports soft power so we can in fact turn it on either from the power key on the keyboard or from the switch on the back. So we'll use the keyboard to start the 2VX up in this case. Turn the monitor on first. Let's wait for that to, uh, to warm up. And now we'll switch on. Okay, we now have the Macintosh 2VX up and running, so let's have a quick look at the system software. So on this 2VX we're running macOS 7.6, and one consequence, I think it was from system 7.5 and up, where it did not show the actual model of Macintosh here, it would just show the word Macintosh, which was uh, a bit strange, and we have 8 megabytes of built-in memory. Now, the control panels for System 7.6 look more or less the same as they did for System 7.5, and in fact, earlier versions of the software as well, come to think of it. But there is one interesting point to note if you're using a Mac with a CD-ROM drive, and that is the required extensions that you need to make it work. Because the system software does require a special extension, or in it, um, as it's known in System 6, to enable a SCSI or IDE CD-ROM. Now, more or less with every version of the system software, I think from version 7.5 and up, that extension is actually built in. And if we look here, we can see the one that I'm referring to. If we look, uh, where is it? Apple CD-ROM, this extension here. This is the extension that allows an Apple-branded CD-ROM drive to function under the system software. But it's important to note that this extension will only work if you have an actual Apple-branded CD-ROM drive. In other words, one that has was supplied with a Macintosh system. Because what the extension will do is it will query the device and ask it for its identification when the SCSI bus is scanned. And if it finds a drive that is not an Apple CD-ROM, it will not function. So you may be asking, well, then how do you, if, say, you have a CD-ROM drive that was, wasn't originally used with a Mac, but it's still a SCSI CD-ROM, how do you get it to work with a Mac? Well, there are other extensions you can use, in fact. Uh, there's a couple 
um, that I've used. One of them is called um, CD Sunrise. If you uh, Google that, I'm sure you can find it. It's an extension that basically enables support for any SCSI CD-ROM under the Mac OS, which is nice. But in this case, because this 2VX has, a, has its original CD-ROM drive, this extension will work just fine. Now at this point, we'll try a couple of old CD-ROM based Macintosh games. And one of the ones that I happen to have is a CD-ROM version of one of my old favourites, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Now, if you've watched my video on the Macintosh 2 demonstration, I did show Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, but that was the floppy disk based version. This one, being the CD-ROM based version, has quite a bit more um, a multimedia content, shall we say, um, more animations and uh, things like that, given that it's now on a CD-ROM which gives you far more storage space. But like a lot of CD-ROM games, you have to install it on the hard disk. You have to install the main program file on the hard disk, which you then run from there, and then it pulls content in from the CD when required. But unfortunately, I believe with this game, you still have to use the CD-ROM to play it. You can't install the whole game entirely onto the hard disk. Now another interesting point that I made, uh, it was in the last video in fact on the 2VX, was the fact that it uses a caddy loading system for the CD-ROM. And just to remind you of what that looks like, if I down here you can see that the CD-ROM drive on the Macintosh 2VX uses a caddy to load the CD as opposed to a tray or a slot. Now, some of you probably have never actually seen um, a caddy loading CD-ROM drive, and just to uh, just to show you what it uh, what it looks like, here is the CD caddy itself. So it's basically a, a plastic case into which you insert the CD and then you insert the entire case into the drive. Now I'm not sure why this was done originally. It may have been done uh, to alleviate concerns that maybe the disc would become scratched or damaged if it was handled um, as is. But of course that turned out not to be the, the case and uh, slot and tray loading CD-ROM drives took over very early on, but this one happens to be a caddy loading drive. So the way you insert the disc into the caddy is you have to, just get the angle right here, you have to push in on these two tabs on the bottom and then lift up on the top cover. And that, as you can see, exposes the inside of the, the caddy. You then take your CD and you slot and you simply whoop, <laughs> and you simply insert it into the slot and then close the top cover and close the latches. So the disc is now contained within the caddy. And when it's inserted into the drive, you insert it this way up with the, the arrow facing forwards. When it's inserted into the drive, this metal shutter is pulled aside, which allows the drive to access both the, the hole for the uh, spindle motor and the disc itself. And the cover is screw loaded so that when you take the caddy out, it covers the disc completely. So what we'll do is we'll start up where in the world is Carmen San Diego. So I'm just going to insert it into the uh, to the drive. And now, in a moment, we should see it, we should see the disk mount on the desktop. And there it is. So now, if we go into the disk itself, you can see that we have the uh, installer here, some other, other extensions that uh, you might need depending on the version of macOS you're running, and down the bottom we have all of the actual multimedia content 
that the game requires. And notice in fact that this is in fact a hybrid Windows and, sorry not Windows, um, DOS and Mac CD, which is why you actually have the old DOS setup program here, because you can in fact use this disk on a DOS PC as well. Now I've already gone ahead and installed the the files that's, that are required to be installed on the, the hard disk, so we'll launch it from here. Note that it may take a moment to start up because it's having to load all the content off a double speed CD-ROM, which might uh, which might take a minute. See how reflective this screen is. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Okay, name. That was a bit of a lag there. <laughs> uh, play with his name. So you can see that the the older version of Where in the World Is Carmen San Diego used a really a, a mobile phone. This one, it's it looks a little bit more advanced. Welcome to Acme. I'm the Chief, but you can call me, well, the Chief. Mm -hmm. We're in the business of tracking down trees, and we're ultimately after one, Carmen San Diego. Every creep we've ever collared has been working for her. Now, when you report for duty, I assign you a case. You go to the scene of the crime and look for clues about where the crook took the loot. Then the chase begins. Any bystander is a potential witness who can point you in the right direction. When you finally catch up with the crook, you've got to bust them. But remember, you can't arrest the crook without a warrant. And you can't get a warrant if you don't know what the crook looks like. Now, I could tell you lots more, but the best way to learn a job is on the job. So, are you ready for your first case? <laughs> as good as motion video uh, got back then. <laughs> File has brought pain to Spain. They stole the bulls from Pamplona. Every year, People come to this town from all over just to run down a narrow street chased by a herd of angry bulls. 
But all that macho is on hold until you stop the crook who took the ball. Charge! Well, can't they find another one? <laughs> Now, I have to confess, I haven't actually played this version of Carmen San Diego before, so let's see if we can uh, make this work. All right, that will make sense. It's certainly quite a change from the original um, Mac and uh, DOS versions of uh, <laughs> Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Even in fact, the old uh, Apple II version. Hmm. You think they could have chosen something a bit more advanced than a uh, propeller plane? <laughs> can we uh, can we skip this bit? Ah, that's better. It's the only thing you notice with uh, running a game off a CD-ROM, it can be a little sluggish at times. to click on something here. We have to ask people questions, don't we? Um, oh, I think I have to... Uh, oh, I can scroll. Ah, I see. I think I... Do I choose a building? Oh, you there. Aha! Well, hello. Mm, let's try that one. The answer to Blondie. Huh. Hmm. Okay. I'm looking for a Zen temple, he told me. So I'm going where I can find one. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's ask some more questions. I can tell, <laughs> you can tell the graphics performance of the uh, 2VX isn't, uh, isn't the best, but it uh, uh, seems to work fairly well. Hello. Looks like he's carrying the weight of the world, and it's not on his shoulders. <laughs> he's throwing his weight around the sumo wrestling circuit. Okay, let's see where we can go from here. Hmm. Uh, I think we'll try Japan. It's that old plane again. Ugh. I have a feeling that the plane just sits there until it loads the uh, the rest of the uh, the multimedia content. <laughs> just sits there hovering. <laughs> I was about to ask him a question. Look, those bumbling janitors. They must have been cleaning up after your crook. Good tracking. Talk to you. Really? These tribes are 
trying to play up to a prince in a Middle Eastern monarchy that has over 6,000 family members. I noticed that his stature was quite ordinary. Hmm. I'm not really sure what I mean by that. There's nothing of it. Bye. Must be someone else I can talk to. Oh, where do you think you're going? Hello, stranger. He was carrying a map of Riyadh, the capital of a large Arabic nation. Aha. Uh -huh. He might not have a roof over his head, but it was covered. <laughs> so glad I could help. See where we can go from here. Uh, I think we'll go Saudi Arabia. I think. Tell if it's loading the uh, content or not. There's no activity light on the uh, on the CD-ROM drive. <laughs> oh, look who we've got here. Oh, Chief wants to talk to me. If you want to learn more about a location, try calling up one of the Acme Good Guys, who can give you a tour. If you do, you can call back that good guide later to help check over your warrant. Uh, what else can we do? What's this? Ooh. Ooh, there is a database. Mm, probably uh, well out of date. <laughs> Okay, this is the. Uh, uh, okay, well, I think that's uh, I think that's enough. How do we quit? Just Control Q, I suppose. Now, there's one other CD-ROM-based game I'd like to try. Well, actually, it's, it's not CD-ROM-based, but it happened to be on a. Uh, a CD-ROM that I have called Mac Silverware, which is really just a collection of uh, shareware titles for the Mac. So if we load this up, see this uh, CD has applications in all different uh, sorts of categories but uh, we'll go to games and um, we'll give this one game we'll give we'll give it a go called uh, what was it called o ox oxid oxide <laughs> not sure how you pronounce it but uh, let's give it a try
Okay, now I have played this a couple of times, and what you have to do is apparently you're, you're in control of this, like, ball, and you have to, first of all, avoid... Oh, that's right, you can't... Uh, <laughs> you can't move uh, too far outside of the, uh, the border there, but you have to tap on each of these... these squares, and each one reveals... Oh! Reveals a different pattern. But, yeah! <laughs> The idea is you have to get the patterns revealed one after the other, an, an identical pattern. So in other words, each pattern appears on two tiles and you have to tap on the tiles in sequence to unlock that pattern. And while you're doing that, you have to be careful not to get hit by that little spinning, uh, spinning wheel. Ah, I think I just lost that game. <laughs> let's, let's do that again. So, tap that one, that's red. Oh, that one's red, so we've done that one. That's blue. That's green. Oh, there's your green. Oh, oh. That's, oh, that's white. So that's the blue. So these ones here would be the whites. There we go. And then we tap on that one. And then move across. Whoa! To that one. Now, on this one, if you tap on here, I believe... Oh, is that that one, or do you tap on that one? Um, oh, no, you tap on this one. Uh, I might turn that off now. So I think you go... You go in here. Ah, so that's the... So... Is that blue? Oh, what happened there? Oh, I, I think if I stay in that brown area for too long, I have to sort of get in there and get out again. Uh, green be that one. No, hang on, what am I missing? Oh, oh there's two more. Uh huh, and there's your green, and. Aha! Happen then. Mm, okay, I don't think I was supposed to do that. Um. Whoa. Oh, okay. Ah. Aha. Okay, so. I'm supposed to do with this. Aha! Okay. Oh, oops. <laughs> right. So. Oh, 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 oops, oops. <laughs> Gotta be careful. It's very easy to overshoot uh, with this. So, turn that off. What can I do with this? Hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. See, that's that's going to help me, but uh, 